The next paper is SLV 18A, and Miriam 129 derived disease modifier lacus and chromosome 3 regulates the expression of LI 108 isoforms and T cells from Dr. Scalucci, Ishake, and Boto, the Center for Complement and Inflammation Research, the Division of Immunology and Inflammation at the Imperial College in London, United Kingdom. Please, Dr. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank the organizing for inviting me to present our data on our Murai model of SLE and the gene LY108. We've been working for several years now on a congenic mouse model that is deriving from the hybrid strain between the wild type black 6 and 1 to 9 that are widely used in research. And our initial linkage analysis demonstrated years ago that the spontaneous phenotype of autoimmunity of this hybrid strain was linked to three main loci. One locus is on chromosome 1, it's called SLE16, and is linked to the production of autoantibodies and is 1 to 9 origin. Another locus is called SLE18, is on chromosome 3, still linked to autoantibody production and of black 6 origin. And a third locus is on chromosome 7, it's called SLE19, is of 1 to 9 origin and is usually linked to glomerulonephritis. And for the rest of this talk, I will concentrate on SLE16 on the chromosome 1 and SLE18 on the chromosome 3. Years ago, we demonstrated that SLE16 is sufficient to, to break on a black 6 background immune tolerance and uh, uh, trigger the spontaneous production of autoantibodies in this murine model and glomerulonephritis. This locus is a kind of quite important locus in other murine model like the SLE1B mice uh, uh, from the Wakeland group and also it corresponds to the similar locus of lupus susceptibility in, in human with, with, with SLE. Inside this locus there are many genes, uh, later on I'll mention about uh, this family of gene called SLAM, signaling lymphocyte activation molecule, that are believed to be important in the pathogenesis of lupus both in human and uh, murine model. We, when we created this mouse, we wonder how come the, the original strain, the parental strain, are not autoimmune, no, no autoimmune. And usually this indicated that the locus that can drive the phenotype needs to be in association with other loci in different chromosomes. And we hypothesized that the other chromosome that could work together with this and affect the expression of the disease was the one on chromosome 3. So we created a double congenic mouse model that was carrying the lupus acceptability locus on chromosome 1 plus plus the other locus on chromosome 3 called SLE18, and we hypothesized that this interaction could suppress the spontaneous phenotype driven by the susceptibility locus. And indeed, we managed to demonstrate that the interaction of these two loci, still on a black 6 background, could suppress the production of autoantibodies and glomerulonephritis. So we are now concentrating our effort in trying to define which are the genes, the mechanisms that can act and suppress spontaneous autoimmunity in this model and eventually in human with SLE. And recently we have been working on this locus with a congenic dissection approach. We have been narrowing down the fragment and now we know that the uh, lupus suppressive phenotype segregates to a smaller uh, region between uh, 70.1 to 90.5 megabases on the chromosome 3, and this region is enough to suppress the autoantibody production driven by the lupus susceptibility locus. We also know that our phenotype is a T-cell uh, mediated phenotype because the lupus susceptibility uh, T-cells are, they over uh, um, proliferate in anti-CD3 proliferation assay and this uh, um, uh, phenotype can be suppressed once again by the interaction with SLE18 locus and also the TH17 polarization that is increased in the SLE16 mice can be rectified in the double congenic thanks to this small locus. As I mentioned, SLAM are important genes that are located in chromosome 1, both in mice and in humans, and recently there have been many publications indicated that it could be very important in mediating the susceptibility to autoimmunity. 
in particular in human slum family three and slum family six, two members of this family, they've been correlated with the uh, uh, T-cell phenotype and uh, disease activity and with the TH17 differentiation ability of lupus patient. In a murine model used in research, mainly there are two haplotypes of this slum gene called haplotype one that is carried by black six and black six similar mice, usually wild type, non autoimmune, and the haplotype two that is shared by the autoimmune prone strain, strain like one to nine in Zilan White. In, in particular, one gene called LY108 has been recently in, implicating the pathogenesis of lupus in, in murine model, and this gene has got uh, three isoform that change only in the intracellular signaling tail, and they're called 1, 2, and H1. And recently, the H1 isoform has been described only in black six mice, and to be protective, to be able to suppress the autoimmunity when it's uh, uh, transferred in uh, T cells that are deriving from a mouse called SLE1B that is autoimmune prone. The splicing variants, according to the authors, are is due to a polymorphism in the intron 6 that is present only in black 6 mice. We wonder if uh, our, in our congenic mouse the suppression of the phenotype of the SLE16 locus could work through the, um, uh, an epistatic effect on the expression of this, of this gene. And in particular, what we, we looked at, we measured the total expression of LY108 in RNA structure from naive T cells of our lupus prone mouse and our lupus resistant mouse. Both of them, they are carrying the same haplotype of this gene, that is the haplotype 2, so they should have the same expression. But instead, we, man we managed to demonstrate that in the lupus resistant prone uh, mouse, the expression of this gene was similar to the black 6. Furthermore, we demonstrated by reverse transcription PCR that the H1 isoform, so far described only in black 6 mice, actually was present also in this other mouse strain that is lupus resistant. And uh, we sequenced this fragment, it's exactly the H1 described in the literature, and also the polymorphism in the intron 6 that uh, has been described exactly by the, the author in the, in the black 6 mice, wasn't present in this strain. So, most likely, this polymorphism is not the only reason why you can have this splice variant in, 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 the, in, the, in the mice. So we conclude that uh, our lupus suppressive locus is capable of suppressing the uh, related uh, lupus-related T cell abnormalities driven by a uh, susceptibility locus that is shared between mice and human, that this uh, locus called SLE18 can modulate the expression of a gene called L108 and can induce the transcription of the lupus-protected isoform H1. And our data demonstrate an epistatic effect between the SLE18 locus on the expression of the slum gene family within the chromosome 1. In the future, we are in the, in the process of identifying which genes can regulate this and in which way this, this, the gene in SLE18 locus can affect the slum expression, and this could be potentially a new pathway that can regulate cell activity in, in a human as well. I would like to uh, uh, thank Atia Ishak and Marina Botto from the Center for Complement Inflammation Research in Imperial College London and Arthritis Research UK for providing the funding for my research. Thank you very much for your attention. We do have time for questions. Is there any question from the audience? Yes. So, um, if, if I remember right, the data show the intrinsic B-cell abnormality in the LY108 mouse. So, and so are you saying that there's a T cell difference? Have you done any functional study? We've done functional study on B cells as well in our lupus suppressive strain. It actually, it looks like it's more a T cell effect. So it's true that the SLE1B that is similar to our SLE16 has got also B cell abnormalities, but the suppressive effect looks like to be more a T cell effect. Thanks. <laughs>